good morning students so today we'll be learning about the quality control so these are the different terminologies comes in this topic that is true value precision accuracy specificity sensitivity calibration standardization levy jennings chart and westcar rules so in general terms to define this quality is the fulfillment of requirement of the customer per customer right so here the customers are our patients so how do you attain this quality the quality is not an accident it is always the result of your high intention the sincere efforts of the technicians or the staffs and the intelligent direction and the skillful execution so that is how these are the factors which will help in attaining the quality and improving the quality so coming to the importance of the laboratory tests in clinical medicine what is the importance of these uh, clinic i mean the laboratory tests so the lab test will be uh, one of the part of the diagnostic process in clinical medicine though in 80% of cases the physician can rule out the disease solely depending on their history and the physical examination but nowadays the biochemical and other lab tests are almost very important for the overall diagnostic process so the use of biochemical investigation and lab test will help the physicians and the other healthcare workers to make a proper diagnosis and other clinical judgment of the patients okay so the results whatever we obtain from our laboratory analysis are used to diagnose the disease and prescribe the treatment for example if you perform the um, antibiotic sensitivity test so which will be the sensitive antibiotic that will be prescribed to the patient and also to monitor the health or progress of the patient that is in the prognosis so since these are all the importance of your clinical report or oh sorry the lab report so the report whatever you generate or you'll give to the patient should be reliable and accurate as much as possible so how do we know the reports what we are generating are right or we are right so to know that you should understand the lab work or the work in the clinical biochemistry lab so this is the laboratory workflow in our departments or in the uh, laboratories so it is categorized into three that is pre analytical area analytical and post analytical so under pre analytical area the process will be we take the test requests uh, from the patient and we prepare the patient we collect the proper sample from the patient and we'll transport the sample to the concerned department or concerned uh, lab and uh, we we'll generate the receipt and in the analytical uh, area where we do the testing review and we'll interpret the results whereas in the post analytical area reporting will be done and the record will be managed okay and record management will be done so then it will be given to the patients the reports will be released to the patients so coming to the errors in the clinical laboratory so how do the errors occur so how and why the errors will occur these are the different cause, causes for errors so the understaffed if the staff members are less and the time pressures if the tests are non validated and 
the poor result verification and poor workload management poorly trained technicians and improper reagents or uh, any contaminated reagents use of contaminated reagents or other reasons and equipment reliability also an error of your laboratories okay so coming to the pre analytical process as i said in the pre analytical process we identify the patient we get a suitable sample from the patient and we transport it to the concerned department or the lab and here in the lab they'll receive the sample and they prepare the sample for testing okay so about the 80% of the errors mainly occurs in your pre analytical area so here i have an example of the pre analytical error or pre analytical variable it is mislabeling so here in patient identification it is very important to identify a patient correctly so that you can collect the sample from the correct person and here drawing the blood sample from the wrong person and labeling it to the correct patient sample with a different patient's label can contribute to the laboratory error that is you are mislabeling for example uh with the same name with a different age like 40 years neha and the other patient with the same name neha having a uh, 14 years so you may label the name of uh, the sample with the 14 years to the f- uh, 40 years patient so that is how the change in the age could result in the wrong interpretation of the test and giving the reports to the wrong person so that might be the mislabeling okay so this is the one of the pre analytical variable so you have to be careful while labeling and while identifying the patient also and coming to the analytical phase in the analytical phase we usually run the sample and we run we do the standardization and we run the quality controls so and we do the calibration that is to standardize your instruments we use the calibrators and to check the quality of your reports or front your results that is done by two different quality control as uh, assessments that is one is external quality assurance and the another one is internal quality control okay so coming to the factors influencing the quality in the post analytical area that is the right recording and the reporting and right interpretation of the test results and right turn around time and the Uh, releasing of the report to the right user okay so these are the post analytical process and coming to the definitions so the standardization which encompasses the reference measurement procedures and the reference materials which are required to achieve the greater comparability of patient test values between different clinical assays and the standardization is uh, mainly for the uh, for the achievement of maximum comparability of lab test results and to improve the patient safety so here we have some standard methods like the glucose oxidase peroxidase method which is used for glucose and the other one which is hplc it is a gold standard method for the Mm, sorry glycated hemoglobin or hp a1c okay coming to the calibration so calibration is a process which ensures that and in the instrument readings are accurate with reference to established standards so the calibration is mainly done to align the instrument and it is 
performed using primary reference standards the calibrators are the commercial available materials which is used uh, with the manufacturer instructions and the instruments should be calibrated before we use or before we run the samples or test, uh, patient samples okay coming to the quality control it is a set of procedures used to check that the results of laboratory investigations are reliable enough to release and to assist clinical diagnosis treatment and the follow up so this quality control includes by all means of which the laboratory control operates that is your instrument checks checking new lots of the reagents uh, checking the quality of your solution and even the distilled water which is used for different uh, process in your laboratories like the reconstitution of uh, the reagents okay so this is the quality control operations okay coming to the quality assurance so the quality assurance is a system which is designed to continuous improvement of the uh, efficiency of your laboratory services okay so this quality assurance include both the internal quality control and the external quality control and the quality improvement in the clinical labs so the quality control assurance will be defined as the overall program that ensures the final results which are reported by the laboratory are correct that is the aim of your quality assurance is to ensure the right test is carried out on right sample and the right results are uh, interpreted and is delivered to right person and at a right time there is quality control which refers to the measures that must be included during each test run to verify that the test is working properly okay so this uh, the aim of the quality control is to ensure that the result which are generated are uh, by the tests are correct okay so coming to the specificity and sensitivity so specificity which refers to the ability of the analytical method to determine the particular parameter specifically so here uh, the example is glucose oxidase method which is used for measurement of glucose in a sample so here the glucose oxidase is an enzymatic method the enzyme which will act only on the glucose so the glucose oxidase is highly specific method for glucose uh, measurement compared to the other like folino method because the folino method is not as specific as your glucose oxidase method for the measurement of blood glucose coming to the sensitivity which deals with the ability of your particular method to detect even the small amount of the measured constant so here by using the elisa even the micrograms of the protein can be detected in our proteins whereas the biurate which can detect the grams of the protein in sample or in the serum sample spectrophotometric method that can detect milligrams of the proteins per deciliter so this is about the specificity and sensitivity so coming to the true value so the true value which is an ideal concept and it is a known value and which cannot be achieved so accepted true value which is which is uh, the nearer value to the true value the value approximating the true value the difference between the two values is negligible or within acceptable limits okay the error is which is the discrepancy between the result of measured and the true or acceptable true value coming to the precision and accuracy 
so the precision which refers to the reproducibility of the results when the same sample is analyzed on different occasions by the same person okay so it is the replicate measurements of the same sample so if the reproducibility is good then the test is precise for example if the blood glucose level i get 78 80 and 82 milligrams per deciliter on replicate then my tests are precise okay then coming to the accuracy so it will define the closeness of a result to the true value or acceptable true value if my true value of blood urea is 50 mg per deciliter and my lab which will generate 45 mg per deciliter and the other lab which is generating or which is reporting it as 35 mg per deciliter then my my lab report that is 45 mg per deciliter is accurate than the other lab which is generating the 35 mg per deciliter so the accuracy which is indicating the the nearer value or closeness of a result to the the true value or acceptable true value okay so here these are the pictures in the first picture where the different yellow dots are indicating the different values which are near to each other but they are not near to your acceptable or true value okay so third picture indicate the values are precise but they are inaccurate and in the second picture which is uh, showing the different dots in the different circles and they are not near to each other and not even near to your acceptable true value or true value so the second picture is indicating the results are imprecise and inaccurate whereas the third picture which is showing all the yellow dots near to the the circle in a circle and the values are next to each other so this shows the results are accurate and even precise okay so this is about precision and the accuracy so accuracy which will see how well a measurement agrees with an acceptable value or the true value whereas the precision how well a series of measurements agree with each other is your precision okay so coming to the quality improvement so this quality improvement is mainly to permanently remove the obstacles to get a success and it involves continued monitoring and identifying the defects and uh, following the remedial action to rectify the problem like uh, retraining your technicians or staff members and it also often relies on effective on site evaluation visits also and where you are going to apply this quality assurance that is in the laboratory arrangement and for human resources like the training of the human i mean for the staff members and the health control and for the laboratory equipment and in case of collection and transport of specimen and while handling your specimens and the reagent and reporting of the results also the quality assurance in laboratory involves both the internal quality control and the external quality control so coming to the internal quality control this internal quality control program mainly depends on the use of the the internal quality control specimen which is called a control or the controls okay so this controls are commercially available and they'll be run on 30 consecutive days and then the values are plotted on the chart that is on the levy jennings chart 
and then the chat will be read by using the some statistical methods or by using the best card rules to interpret the results okay so here the what is the control so it is a material that contains the substance being analyzed so this control is used to validate the reliability of the test system so these controls will be run after calibrating your instrument and these are run periodically during the test it is every day before you perform the patient sample or before you run the patient sample this internal quality control is necessary for daily monitoring of the precision accuracy of your analytical methods okay so coming to the levisioning chart this is a graphical representation of your control ranges so this is how we are going to plot the levisioning chart okay so this illustrates the allowable limits of error in the laboratory test performances okay so the mean and the st values are calculated by analyzing the sample uh, for uh, 30 consecutive days the mean and the st values will be calculated and they will be plotted on this chart the value obtained each day will be plotted on this chart and if the analysis is satisfactory the points that are plotted will fall in between the plus or minus 1 st and that says the results are accurate and the accuracy is maintained in your laboratory if the values falls plus or minus 2 st that will be acceptable okay so this is how we plot the test results or the control values on this chart so this will be read by the rules called multi um, sorry west card rules which is a multi rule quality control this quality control uses a combination of decision criteria or control rules so this allows uh, the this multi rule system allows the determination of the analytical error whether in control or it is in out of control okay so if it is in control that will be the results will be approved and if the control is out of range then it, the results are rejected so here these are the multi rule of your best card so this is used when two levels of control material are analyzed per run so these are the different rules so i have an example here which is warning rule 1 to st where one of two control result fall outside plus or minus 2 st and here this is a warning rule okay and here reanalysis of the control is required and here it is not a cause for rejecting a run it is a alert to alert for the possible problems okay so this is a warning rule which is 1 to st okay so when the rule is violated if it is 1 to s still you can report the results if the rule violated 1 3s 2s or r 4s then it says it, the rule in the q q says out of control then you are supposed to take a corrective action so when if the qc is out of control what you are going to do you just stop testing identify and correct your problem and repeat the um, testing of your patient sample and the controls and do not run the uh, do not report the patient result until you rectify your problem okay so how do you solve that is first you identify the problem what is the cause for the rule violation 
and refer to established policies and the procedures for the remedi remedial action and coming to the external quality control assessment so this is a system for objectively checking the different laboratory performance using an external agency or facility so the external quality assessment here the participating laboratories will assess their capabilities through panel testing and includes on-site evaluation of the laboratory also so this external quality assessment uh, will be done by the a system or a uh, the the body which is uh, which is uh, ISO certified which will uh, send a, a sample to the uh, participating laboratories to check their quality So here the external quality assurance is uh, done by the external agency or uh, the facilitator who is the external body which will send you the sample. So this is important for the improvement and to measure the laboratory performance. Okay. So here this is how the process goes. The external quality uh, organization or uh, the assessment organization or the provider will send you the sample on regular basis and that will be processed in our laboratories with the instructions given and that is the results will be returned or sent to the evaluation body or the organizer and then that will be evaluated by the organizer and they will send you the the performance report that is ICAS performance report and by looking your performance you can take the corrective action if there is any problem with your quality control so by this I am ending the session thanks for your patience